Operation Hurricane was the first nuclear test conducted by Great Britain on October 3, 1952 near the Montebello Islands, the western tip of Australia. Before you watch this video, I'm going to ask you to support my channel with a thumbs up. It won't cost you anything, but it means a lot to me and my channel. Thank you. Britain was the first country to seriously explore the possibility of a nuclear weapon and made some important conceptual breakthroughs. The first theoretically substantiated critical mass calculation was made in England by scientists from the University of Birmingham, Otto Frisch and Rudolf Peales, in February 1940. The result led to extensive research into the possibility of creating nuclear weapons. Appreciating the importance of the discovery, the British government established a subcommittee on uranium of the Air Warfare Scientific Research Committee. It soon became an independent mod, codename, committee and commissioned a series of theoretical and experimental studies at the universities of Liverpool, Birmingham, Cambridge and Oxford, as well as the British chemical company Imperial Chemical Industries. This committee developed the basic principles of both fission bomb design and uranium enrichment by gaseous diffusion. In the fall of 1940, British nuclear researchers traveled to the United States, where they met with American scientists. They found that their programs were similar and decided that cooperation between the two countries would be mutually beneficial. At this early stage, the British became increasingly aware that with their limited resources for costly development work they would have to rely on America's huge production capacity. The MOD committee soon began discussing the possibility of moving major developments to the United States, and in its 1941 report recommended cooperation with the United States. After studying the report, the British Scientific Advisory Committee decided that the bomb was a high priority and recommended that an experimental uranium-235 separation facility be built in Britain and then a full-scale facility in Canada. After discussions, the British government, with Winston Churchill as Prime Minister, decided to launch a program to develop an atomic bomb. To this end, an organization responsible for all atomic resources, the Tube Alloys Directorate, was created within the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research DSID. Tube Alloys became the codename for the British Atomic Project during the war. In August 1941 US President Franklin Roosevelt offered Britain cooperation in this area, but Churchill refused. As the war drained more and more British resources, by 1942 the implementation of their program lagged behind that of the United States. As a result, Churchill agreed that the British and American projects should be combined. In the summer of 1942, based on an agreement with the British government, the U.S. War Department was instructed to organize joint activities of specialists from both countries on the use of nuclear energy for military purposes. For this purpose, on August 13, 1942, the Manhattan Engineering District of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers was officially established, all research groups began to work according to one plan, which was called the Manhattan Project. Many prominent British scientists were soon transferred to the United States to work on the project. In August 1943, Britain and the United States concluded the Quebec Agreement, under which the parties pledged to use the atomic bomb only by joint decision and not to share information about nuclear weapons with anyone. This agreement formalized the coordinated development of nuclear weapons by the US and Britain, finally merging the British Tube Alloys program with the American Manhattan Project. Together, this project led to the development of the atomic bombs dropped on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in August 1945. On August 29, 1945, the new British government, led by Prime Minister Clement Attlee, organized a special cabinet committee on atomic energy to develop nuclear policy, called Gen.75. Later, an even smaller secret group of ministers known as Gen.163, part of Gen.75, made key decisions concerning the atomic bomb program. There was also an advisory group called the Advisory Committee on Atomic Energy, ACAE. In 1946, the United States unilaterally ended its nuclear cooperation with Great Britain by passing the so-called McMahon Act, Atomic Energy Act, which forbade the transfer of scientific data and work on atomic fission to any third parties. In addition, the scientists who returned to Great Britain and took part in the U.S. project did not have a complete picture of it, because their access to all the information was restricted while they were working in the U.S. 
The head of the British atomic bomb program was William Penny, who during the war had a prominent position in the British mission to the Super Laboratory for the development of the atomic bomb, located on the Los Alamos Plateau in New Mexico, USA. One of his first steps was to compile a document called Plutonium Weapons General Description, which detailed the collective notes of all the British scientists working on the Manhattan Project. Therefore, the British bomb to be built was based on the design of the American Implosion Plutonium Bomb. Research centers were established at Woolwich and Fort Halsted to develop it. The first British plutonium plant was built in Sellafield, later renamed Windscale, but after a while the former name was returned, on the Irish sea coast. Its first production reactor became operational in 1950, and by 1952 the plant began producing usable plutonium. However, it did not have time to make the necessary amount of plutonium for the first test device, so some plutonium supplied by Canada was incorporated into the explosive core. Britain, because of its small size and high population density, did not have suitable sites for atmospheric weapons testing, so it was decided to conduct it in the Monte Bello Islands near the west coast of Australia. The British expedition to test the first atomic bomb included five ships, a frigate with the bomb, a rescue test ship, three landing craft, and 1,500 men. A nuclear explosive device was detonated on October 3, 1952, aboard a frigate anchored 12 meters deep near the Monte Bello Islands. The explosion yield was about 25 kilotons. This method of testing was not chosen by chance. Firstly, the first British nuclear explosive device, because of its unwieldiness, was not yet a complete warhead, that is, it could not be used as an aircraft bomb. Second, the British sought to assess the possible consequences of a nuclear explosion near the shore, in particular, its impact on ships and coastal structures. The reason for this was that in those years, when considering a potential nuclear attack by the Soviet Union, the possibility of covert delivery of a Soviet nuclear charge to one of the British ports in a merchant navy ship or an attack by a torpedo with a nuclear warhead was taken into account. The explosion literally vaporized the ship. A splash of molten metal, lifted into the air as it fell ashore, caused dry vegetation to catch fire in several places. At the site of the explosion an oval crater up to 300 meters in diameter and 6 meters deep was created on the seabed. After the test, the first British atomic bomb entered service in November 1953. Having tested their first atomic weapon, the British hoped to return to cooperation with the United States. However, less than a month later the U.S. tested its first hydrogen, thermonuclear, bomb, again gaining a technological advantage, and was unwilling to share its nuclear secrets. In 1954 Britain began to develop thermonuclear weapons, and the first hydrogen bomb was successfully tested on November 8, 1957. Only after that in 1958 did the U.S. agree to exchange nuclear information with Great Britain through an amendment to the Atomic Energy Act of 1946. In the same year, both sides also signed a mutual defense treaty between the U.S. and Great Britain, authorizing cooperation in nuclear research as well as the transfer of materials and equipment. After a brief moratorium on nuclear testing, Britain began conducting joint tests with the U.S. at the U.S. Nevada test site. Subsequently, British atomic weapons were modeled on U.S. designs made available under the 1958 agreement. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.